how much html css javascript is enough for you to start full stack development i am now teaching a course and i have seen this very closely i have seen folks who knew react but struggled in the first few weeks i knew folks who did not know anything but did fairly well in the first few weeks because they followed the structure that was needed and i think were the fundamentals before you dive into full stack so in this video let's understand the basic roadmap of what is step 1 before you dive into full stack what are the things that you should spend just 3 to 4 days on clear some fundamentals and then move to any framework that you want let's get right into the video so today full stack development is very well abstracted you have frameworks like django that take away the complexity of writing back end servers you have frameworks like react that were built to make your life as a full stack developer easier but how were websites written before these were introduced is something that you need to know before you start why while well, in the course i am teaching i saw someone who said he knew react but struggled with a very basic thing uh, which i like query parameters in back end servers and basically told me that this looks something to react which sort of boggled my mind i did not understand the statement and that made me realize today it's very easy to ask chat gpt to to write a simple react application for you it's hard for you to know what it's doing under the hood and that is what you should spend just the first one week doing before you dive into react what are these things let's talk about them very concretely the first thing you should start with is a scripting language which in case of full stack is javascript i have linked a prerequisite video that was the prerequisite to my course it's a very nice one one and a half hour video that has more than 10 million views which means a lot of people were able to understand it very well so i think you should as well if you want to get under this path and you've decided i want to do full stack first one week in fact first day try to go through that video it's a very nice javascript explainer slash warming up video it teaches you the basic syntax of javascript for loops if else for anamaka things that you need to know when you're writing code eventually if you don't know this it will be very hard for you to directly dive into react or even write basic applications after you've spent maybe a few hours doing that maybe a full day do a bunch of lead code problems do a bunch of assignments where you solve a lot of problems algorithmic problems and you get comfortable with the for loops while loops if else flana namaka you know the syntax of javascript fairly well step 2 is learning html css little bit not too much why not too much because in the real world when you're writing applications in react or view you're not using html at all you're using a little bit of css but it's very well abstracted in frameworks like tailwind css or mui which are the popular frameworks to write a uh, front end applications but you need to know how things are happening under the hood so step 1 learn basic tags in html you don't have to get into complicated things like td dr tables things like that no one uses them you have very nice components to reuse in react or view but you need to know html you need to be able to understand what a div is what a span is bold tag uh, maybe typography h1 h2 things like these and maybe input boxes buttons that's where you can cut a line then connect the javascript you've learned and the html that you've written add some functionality to clicking on a button doesn't need to be very complicated react code have functions in there just understand how you can import javascript files using the script tag how you can define a function in the javascript file and how you can call it when clicking on a button this is a nice checkpoint you know html using which you can now create ugly websites because you haven't yet introduced css and you can add functionality to your website you can actually do something when a button is clicked when a key is pressed things like these maybe at this point try to create a game using canvas so have your key presses so capture your key presses using javascript and based on what key is pressed maybe move a rectangle to the right or the left this is a very basic game in which you are able to move let's say a box inside a canvas or on the html dom itself using your arrow keys fairly good point for you to know html and javascript you understand these two things you know how they work very well with each other now understand very basic styling in css background color font color things like these you just need to know that html tags can be styled how are they styled using css there is inline css and then you can move it to a different file where you can very structurally define your css at this point you know html css javascript and how they work with each other the only thing that's left to learn now is how your application can connect to a backend server before you do that you might need to understand javascript a little bit more and dive into 
the asynchronous nature of JavaScript. So what have we done up until this point? We started with HTML. We connected HTML and JavaScript and then we did some CSS. At this point, you have enough knowledge to create a simple game in which you press a key, a person moves to the left, you press a key, person moves to the right. Maybe he's on a canvas that's red in color and the person is yellow in color. Straightforward, create this project. After you have done this and you understand this project end to end, is when you should understand two things. One, the asynchronous nature of JavaScript. Two, how you can use JavaScript to talk to backend APIs. Now, what is the asynchronous nature of JavaScript? This is three to four hours of video where you understand uh, promises, async JS, single threaded nature of JS, what is a JS engine and how it runs on your browser and in a backend Node.js application. The second part, connecting it to the backend, is understanding that websites are not just simple frontends. They need to talk to backend servers. For example, ChatGPT needs to talk to a very complicated model. How do you send this request? I mean, the answer is a simple fetch API that the browser provides you or Node.js does. But you need to understand how that's happening. Like, what is the request? How is it going on? What is coming back? What are status code? What are headers? What are cookies? What are things that you send? What are things do you, that you receive? And how you send an HTTP request? Now you know how to create a basic website in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe even a game, and it can talk to a backend server. This is the point where you need to do one more thing for me, and then you're good to go. Learn React, learn Django, do whatever you want after this. One last thing you need to do is understand DOM manipulation, which is how full stack applications were built before React came into the picture or Vue.js came into the picture. Before these frameworks were introduced, how would dynamic websites be created? How would you, based on the data that you get from your backend server, manipulate the DOM so that different things appear, okay? If you don't understand this, my second part of the full stack series covers exactly this. We cover this in detail where we show how DOM manipulation happens and how React makes things much easier for you if you've done that DOM manipulation once and how React made your life much easier as a developer. You don't have to do DOM manipulation by hand once you have frameworks like React or Vue. But what is DOM? You need to learn and how you do manipulation is another thing you need to learn. You have a very nice video that explains it end to end. Cool. After this point, do whatever you want. Go to any framework, ask ChatGPT to create websites, but you know how things are happening under the hood. Even if you're using React, if you're using Tailwind, or if you're using Axios or some external library to send HTTP requests, what's happening in the end inside your browser is simple HTML that you've learned, simple JavaScript, simple DOM manipulation, and simple fetch requests. You don't see it when you use these frameworks, but they're eventually compiled down to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, similar to what you've written in these in this one week. So. Learn how to write this HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then use whatever framework. Basically write the same logic using complicated frameworks that make your life easier. You can compare this to ChatGPT. Pre-React days, this was how websites were written, which was really hard. React came and made lives of developers much easier. Did it take away jobs? No, it created more jobs. Now React developer is a thing in itself. So don't worry about ChatGPT either. Effectively, it is a parser that gives you some code and React is also a parser that gives you some HTML, CSS and JavaScript code. This is true. React is not a framework in itself. It is a framework. It is not a language in itself that your browser understands. Your browser only understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. React is an easy way to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, similar to how ChatGPT is an easy way to react, uh, write React code today. So understand this transformation. ChatGPT is an easy way to write React code. React is an easy way to write simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Learn this first, then learn this, then go to ChatGPT and ask it to write your code. With that, let's end the video. I'll see you the next one. Bye. React is an easy way to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Sorry. ChatGPT is an easy way to write HTML. Get let's write into the video. <laughs> Get video in the let's write.